Hello and thank you for watching. If you go into a hospital, emergency room, or any medical clinic, or even if you're riding on an ambulance, there's basically five different things they check as far as your vitals in an examination. And there's an easy way to remember this. If you can just picture going up your arm, top of your head, and down to your lungs, they start out with your blood oxygen. They usually put a pulsometer on your finger, check that. And they check your pulse. Come in up your arm here, they check your blood pressure, put a blood pressure cuff on your arm. Then coming up the top of the head here, uh, your temperature, and then coming down your breathing rate. So that's five things. Start here, work your way up, top of your head and come down. Blood oxygen, pulse, uh, blood pressure, temperature, and breathing rate. Well, we as Christians, uh, being born again, uh, there's certain things that we watch in our personal walk like our vitals. It's all about eternity. It's all about eternity. And these are not uh, things that a lost person would check. <clears throat> There's no need. These are things that people that are born again would check in their personal character and their conduct and, and, and see how they feel about these things. And we've got it set up as an acronym. And so at this point, we're going to go to the acronym. Okay, and the acronym that you see here, there's five letters. R-G-I-R-L, and they represent the five crowns that we can receive in eternity. There's a crown of righteousness, there's a crown of glory, there's an incorruptible crown, there's a crown of rejoicing, and a crown of life. These are the five crowns that you can receive in eternity, and these are all based on your actions that you do today in your personal character and your conduct and the way that you conduct your life. These are uh, crowns that are given to you based on your actions. Salvation is a free gift. It doesn't cost you anything. If, you're, if you put your faith and trust in what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you at Calvary, you're born again. That's all it takes to get born again. It's a free gift. It doesn't cost you anything. But these crowns are going to cost you something. Uh, so what we're going to do now in this study is to explain how these crowns operate. Okay, for this first crown, we're in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. If you love the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and look for his appearing, uh, God promises you a crown for that. And so the idea is to always be ready and be always looking for the return of the Lord. He could come at any moment. Uh, we're not, debt setter, we're not uh, date setters, but uh, the Lord can come back at any time. Uh, so we always want to be ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God promises you a crown for that. The second crown is the crown of glory. It says in 1 Peter chapter 5, and we'll go with verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being disciples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. That's a crown that you can receive for feeding the flock. Anytime that... Uh, you do a Bible study or you preach or, or whatever, you edify the saints, uh, God says he's going to give you a crown for that. And also, the Bible says, he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Anytime you undergird a pastor or a teacher, you know, helping them financially or, or whatever, anytime that you help them out, you're entitled to part of that crown as well. So, so far, we've talked about the crown of righteousness and the crown of glory. These are some of the crowns that you can receive uh, just by your actions. And these are things that we need to watch and monitor and make sure that we do them. If we're not doing these things, we're lacking. It's, some, it's like vitals. It's something that we check. And if we're doing these things, great. If we're not, it should bring some alarm to us that we need to make some changes. And get, and get right in some certain areas with the Lord. Okay, the next crown that we're going to look at is the incorruptible crown. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 
and verse 25, it says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they that do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, etc. Uh, this is a crown that you can receive for uh, having a temperate life. In other words, you got your life in balance. Temperate means to mix and modify, to bring to pro proper state. Um, for example, uh, in your life, there's a lot of activities that you could do. You could have a full-time job, and then you could be into working out at the health club, and then maybe you have a sport that you like to participate in, and then maybe you're married, and maybe you have kids in school, and, and then you're active in your local church, and just all these different activities that you do. Uh, you have to have all these in balance. They have to be tempered in balance so you can maintain your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and bear fruit. It's possible to get so busy in activities that you don't have any time for the Lord. We suggest that people get up real early in the morning when you're high energy and you're fresh and the house is quiet and there's not much traffic outside and just get alone and have a quiet time with the Lord and get your Bible study First thing in the morning, have your conversation and your fellowship with the Lord first thing in the morning. And then that way through the day, you can have additional fellowship. But the main thing is you fellowship with them every day. And it's good to read your Bible every day as well. So uh, this idea about an incorruptible crown is obtained by having a, a life that is in balance or tempered. Okay. The next crown is a crown of rejoicing over in... 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 19, it says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? This is a crown that you can receive for winning people to the Lord. And we, you know, we're, God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come under repentance. And so God. God doesn't want anybody to be condemned. He doesn't. And he, want, he wants us to be ambassadors for Christ. He wants us to witness whenever we get that opportunity. And so uh, God promises us a crown for uh, witnessing the people. And so uh, when we use this in the idea of vital signs, in other words, checking our uh, our character and conduct and our walk by these five crowns. The idea of a crown of rejoicing is, are you attempting to win people to the Lord? Are you making some kind of a, a reasonable attempt in your, in, your, in your own way to win people to the Lord? Everybody's different. Uh, I'm not trying to define how that you witness to people. I'm not saying that. But the question is, are you trying to win people to the Lord? The Bible says, he that win his souls is wise. So this has been a um, discussion on the crown of rejoicing. Now, the next crown that we want to look at is the crown of life. Okay, the Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. This is a crown that you can receive. From the Lord for just uh, you trying to avoid temptations and this is something that uh, everybody's going to struggle with at times because we're all in the flesh the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 24 and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust we are in the flesh. We have three parts. We have a body, soul, and spirit. If you're born again, your soul is born again, but your flesh is not born again. You don't get your new flesh until the rapture. So at times, we all will have problems with the flesh because the flesh will produce uh, some bad affections and lusts. And so we have to deal with that. Um, I wouldn't get mad at yourself because you've had a bad affection. I wouldn't get mad at yourself because you had 
lust. I wouldn't get mad at yourself about that. But I would be upset about what you have done with that because we're all in the flesh. Those, those affections and those lusts will come, will come. Your flesh is not saved yet. It's not saved yet. And so the flesh, the flesh can get you down. Those affections and those lusts will come. But when you endure those, when you endure those temptations, that's when God says he's promising you a crown of life. There's a special crown that you'll get for enduring these lusts and temptations. Uh, again, those lusts, those affections, they will come. They believe me, they will come. But what you do with them is the issue of this crown. If you can endure it, in other words, try to get around it, uh, there's, there's solutions to the problem like getting busy spiritually. The Bible says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you get busy spiritually, you can put down these affections and these lusts. That's how you beat it. You got two natures constantly battling against each other, the spirit nature and the flesh nature. And the flesh at times will fight against you. So you just have to get more busy or spiritually to put down the flesh. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh, our direct battle is not directly at the flesh. We get victory over the flesh by getting spiritually, uh, uh, getting more busier spiritually. For example, uh, more Bible study, uh, more assembling with the saints, more singing spiritual songs, uh, witnessing uh, your prayer life. There's all kind of different things that you can do uh, to get more busy spiritually. If you get a little bit burned out in one area, Let's say you're, you're reading your Bible too much. Uh, I know it's rare, but it's possible. Let's say that the Bible is getting a little bit dry to you, okay? Uh, you, you've been reading a lot, and all of a sudden you're a little bit weary. Well, what you need to do is don't throw the towel in. Find something else. Change the channel. Find something else spiritual to do. Get some, get some good spiritual music going and listen to it, you know, or, or something like that. Or, or call up a brother and go meet with a brother and have coffee with them and or maybe go witness to somebody. Just you know, you got you got to stay busy spiritually. If you don't stay busy spiritually, the flesh will step in. The, the flesh will step in. So if you constantly try to keep victory over the flesh and over the temptations that come, God promises you, based on that verse that we read, He promises you a crown of life. So it can be done. These are these have been some um, very interesting vital signs that we check uh, ourselves. And this gives us the ability to know, uh, are we right? Are we right? Are, have our decisions been right? Are we in balance? Are we in balance? Uh, myself, uh, this one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. I'm, I'm constantly, I'm vigilant about examining myself and uh, I'm trying to run my race for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so at times I stop and I just, I check my vital signs. I check those five crowns because in eternity, that's all that matters. In eternity, that's all that matters. Uh, those crowns, this is something that the Lord will reward you with and they'll follow you forever and ever into eternity. Okay, well, I hope this little presentation has been a blessing to you. Hope that you can glean something from it. And uh, thank you very much for watching.